So on today's episode, we are going to be talking about unit-linked insurance plans or as they're popularly called as ULIPs. Uh, we're going to understand whether this is uh, an investment that perhaps makes sense for you or not. What are the pros, the cons, all of that uh, we'll uh, talk about on this show and uh, joining me uh, for more details and to um, understand this better is uh, Firoz Aziz, Deputy CEO of Anandrathi Wealth Management. Firoz, uh, thank you so much for joining us on Investor's Guide. And over the last couple of episodes, you know, we've been breaking down uh, various uh, investment concepts and talking about certain uh, products as well. Uh, but this uh, point, as far as ULIPS is concerned, is important because uh, there is a lot of uh, misconception about ULIPS, uh, whether it makes sense, it doesn't, or, or people investing in it without realizing. So it's important to bust all of those myths and to help people understand uh, this entire product. Uh, so let's start by, uh, you know, understanding how exactly does a ULIP work? Abdi, uh, ULIPS, as you rightly said, unit-linked insurance plans, are an investment and an insurance product combined. Uh, they try to achieve both these objectives in a certain fashion. Uh, Unit-linked uh, insurance plans actually are a unitized method of allocating your money into another portfolio of funds or stocks or bonds or a mix of both. Uh, and a portion of the money which you invest uh, in the ULIP is set aside uh, for you to get the insurance cover. But this combination uh, is called an unit-linked insurance plan and uh, most of all, all of the insurance companies offer these in the life insurance uh, umbrella. Uh, so this is uh, basically what a unit-linked insurance plan is. Uh, they have been a part of uh, several people's portfolios for the last two decades and they've gone through a large transformation as well. Uh, there have been the old avatars and the new avatars depending on the cost they actually have uh, for the insured. Right. Uh, so, Firoz, of course, as far as the product itself goes or the concept of ULIPS, it's gone through multiple changes over the last several years and now, of course, they're quite cheap. In fact, they used to be extremely expensive in terms of the kind of charges uh, that uh, they had. Uh, but they still, uh, you know, are not uh, as uh, cheap or as low in charges as perhaps a mutual fund is uh, because they have that extra charge when it comes to, you know, the insurance part of it. So there is the, that premium allocation charge uh, that we're talking about uh, along with the mortality charge for the insurance part. And then you also have your charge of fund management charge, which is the actual, um, uh, you know, the charge of managing the money, which goes uh, as the investment. If you can break that part up for us, Firoz. Uh, yes, uh, Avni, you rightly pointed out that the costs uh, are higher. There are four or five heads under which these costs are uh, established uh, in the product and in turn passed on to the investor or, or the insurer because you're trying to meet two objectives at once. Uh, so uh, there are some costs which are fair because a comparable product like a mutual fund for investments also has a certain cost, which is the management fee. Uh, that's a fair cost. Uh, the one one unfair cost, uh, to my mind, uh, is the premium allocation charge, which is like an exit entry load, uh, which was levied uh, way back in 2008. So it's been abolished in mutual funds uh, for more than a decade now, but insurance policies can still have a premium allocation charge, which implies if you put 100 rupees in the policy, a portion of that, say 5 rupees, is taken as an entry load and only 95 gets invested. Uh, into uh, the uh, the portfolio which which is there for growth of your money. Uh, so uh, there are five costs. One is the premium allocation, just like I described, where, where that's an entry load. Uh, second is the mortality charge. Mortality charge is a fair charge uh, to my mind because you're getting an insurance against that cost. That's not a sunk cost. You're also getting a benefit for that cost, which is the insurance uh, which you're getting. Uh, the fund management fee is generally a little high on the insurance side vis-a-vis -vis the mutual fund. Uh, third, uh, the cost of uh, administration is generally higher. That's that's the running uh, process, costs money to the manufacturer. That is passed on in full uh, to the investor. And the last one is when you switch money between portfolios in an insurance policy, uh, there are some free switches which you are permitted. Beyond that, you get a cost which is called the switching cost uh, between the two portfolios. Uh, say if you want to move from equity to debt or vice versa, 
you have a certain number of free switches permitted per year. If you've exceeded those, uh, then you get this uh, new innovative charge of switching as well. Right. Uh, so, Firoz, you know, just to sort of uh, simplify it a little further for uh, someone to understand uh, how a ULIP works, uh, would I be right in saying, uh, you know, it is a combination of insurance and investment, so it works sort of like how a mutual fund works, that is one part of what you put in, uh, works like how a mutual fund would work, and the second part uh, works, uh, you know, like an insurance plan uh, would work. A and you've also done some interesting uh, research and in terms of the performance uh, of uh, different uh, ULIPs uh, as well and how they compare up uh, as far as mutual funds are concerned. Uh, so what would be your key takeaways uh, from this and your advice in terms of whether one should keep uh, mutual funds and insurance or investments and insurance separate or sort of use this combination product, uh, uh, you know, and invest in ULIPs? Uh, uh, like you said, Avni, uh, investing and insure, insuring yourself are two separate objectives. When you try and combine these two, you achieve both these objectives at a suboptimal level. You're not achieving both of them to their full potential. Uh, so combining a mutual fund with a term plan, uh, which is also an insurance product, uh, but there you don't expect any money in return. So the premiums are very, very low relative to what you have to end up paying in a ULIP. So to answer your pointed question, mutual fund and the insurance uh, uh, for insurance needs in the form of a term plan, if they are segregated, the value it will create for you in long periods of time is enormous, point one. Uh, point two, which you rightly said, we did a lot of analysis because we have the business of giving unbiased data-backed advice. Uh, so over the years of uh, analysis, of several people's life policies, not an academic analysis, a uh, life policies which come to you for a review. Uh, we reviewed close to 15,000 policies out of which 10,000 of them were traditional plans. That's another category of products. ULIPs, about 4,800 of them we analyzed and we realized that the return they generated after a long period of holding, uh, close to 10 years average, was only a 2.84%. Uh, that's the kind of return you ended up making after paying for all the costs uh, which those units actually levied on the person who invested or insured himself. 